All right, so this morning, we're just gonna, I'm, I'm going to have a brief message uh, this morning, and um, then we're going to partake in communion. Lance and I are going to um, both lead you guys uh, in, in taking communion this morning. Um, we've, we've been in this series that's called uh, Things That Need to Be Said. And the first week I talked about, you know, that mission is what matters, uh, that, that at the end of the day, the mission comes from Jesus. It's not something I created or you create or he creates or anything. Mission comes from Jesus. Uh, we get our marching orders from, uh, from Christ himself. Um, we talked about Matthew 28, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that he's commanded. So the, the mission is what matters and the mission doesn't come from any of us. Um, and with the change of pastors, the mission of this church doesn't change. Each church is unique. They do, they carry out that mission a little bit differently because God gathers unique people in each place, but the mission doesn't change. So this, the mission of this church isn't going to change. In fact, one of the things that Lance is excited about from what he's told me is being a, a part of a church that's clear about its mission um, as this church is clear about its mission. So, um, so, that, so mission is what matters. The, the second week we talked about uh, the fact that uh, unfortunately in the world that we live in, money drives mission. And I wanted to say that to you guys before he even got here because I didn't want him to have to stand up and, and use relational credibility to do it. I've, I spent six years here uh, trying to, to do right by this congregation, do the best that I could do, and I figured it was time to expend some of that relational credibility on the way out the door. And so what I said to you was a couple of kind of key statistics that, that just needed to be lifted up. Um, first of all, I lifted up all the ministries that this church does, uh, the heart that this church has and, and the kind of church this church is trying to become. And then I just said, look, if we want to be great, if we want to be that kind of church, we need to be able to, to do those things. Those things cost money to do. And then I looked up two key statistics. First of all, in the last eight months, this church has grown by 126%. We've grown, we've more than doubled in the last eight months since we moved into this facility. And we're so glad, we're so, we're, we're, we're glad for the folks that were here in the school. We're glad for the folks who are here today. Um, what we said is during that, that same time, well, we've grown 126% in our attendance if you take out two large gifts that we got this year that we do not think will be ongoing gifts, um, our, our giving has grown by 13%. So 126% growth, 13% growth in our finances. And all I did was I just said, friends, I don't stand to gain anything from this. I don't get a raise. I don't get a new car. I don't get any of that stuff other than I love you and I want to see this church be great. And what I said was... Um, that is not sustainable. So I invited this congregation, um, all of you, to, to say, okay, if I'm starting to plant my feet here, if this is becoming my church home, I want to be a part of it. I want to I get involved. I want to serve. I want to uh, do. I want to volunteer. I want to do all those things. I also invited you to make your finances a part of that commitment um, because this church um, can't be the church God wants it to be if it can't fund the ministries that God's wanting us to do. So that was the second week, and we did, we did two other weeks where we, we talked about uh, things that needed to be said. Today we're going to do the last of those, um, and, and then next week will be Lance's first sermon. The week after that will be not things that need to be said, but things that need to be sung, because I'm going to do my last sermon will be a, 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 a musical sermon. So this is my last sermon to you, and it's the last thing that needs to be said, and I think it can be relatively brief. We're going to look in 1 Corinthians today. Um, it's chapter 1 of first corinthians so i hope you'll turn there uh, if you don't have a bible with you we always have them on the back table and we always put it up here so that we're operating out of the same um out of the same translation so this is what paul says to the church at corinth that he helped to start uh, after he had gone away um, and wrote them this letter because of some things that he had heard starting in verse 10 in first corinthians chapter one this is what he says I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this, one of you says, I follow Paul, another, I follow Apollos, Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, so no one can say that you were baptized in my name. 
Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. He sounds like me. <laughs> For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Will you guys pray with me? God, I do thank you that your word still speaks today, that your word is not some dead relic that was uh, written thousands of years ago. It's still a living word that is very sharp, that still um, comforts us and confronts us at the same time. God, I pray this morning that you would either speak a word through me or that you would speak a word in spite of me. But either way, God, uh, we want to hear from you today. And as we pray these things, we pray them in the precious, beautiful, and powerful name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. So you guys, do you guys remember the game Follow the Leader? Anybody remember the game Follow the Leader? When you were kids, you know? Yeah? Awesome. You, I, I still like that game. Grace and I actually played that game this morning before the service. She was following me around, mimicking me. Um, she said, I want to see, um, you know, how, why, uh, what makes a, a pastor tick or something like that. And so she started following me around. Everything I said, she said. Everything I did, she did. Um, but the, you know, the game, follow the leader, you know, you have a leader. Now, sometimes the leader designates themselves. Sometimes they are designated by somebody else. You know, different ways you become the leader. But, but the, the game is that no matter what they do, you follow what they do. And they do crazy things, and you do crazy things. If they jump, you jump. If they you know, do a cartwheel, you do a cartwheel. If they jump into the water, you jump into the water, and, and so on and so forth. I don't even know if the game ever ends. It just goes. Now, I don't know if you, some of you may not have played this game as a kid. I, we've, we found an example from the, uh, the Animal Kingdom that we're going to show this morning, uh, just from YouTube, with just a brief kind of video to show you what this looks like. That is neat. Oh, oh, stand up now. Oh, he was concerned for you. He was like, oh, are you okay? He was concerned for you. Did you hear her say that? Oh, no, he wanted to so eat neat. you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's so neat. So you get the sense of it, right? Now, first of all, I want to know what kind of parrot, right? I mean, just to hear this lady's comments, oh, he likes you. He, there was one time right here coming up, and she, she was like, oh, he wants to pet you. No, he doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Put him inside that room, in that room with that bear. You'll find out he does not want to pet you. <laughs> so some games of, you know, follow the leader can be dangerous, I guess, at the same time. But that poor bear, man, he was excited. And he's just like, hey, who put this thing here? But, you know, follow the leader, it, it's, an important, it's an important game, not just for kids to play, but it's something that, you know, you have to do in life, right? you know, whether it's at work or at school. I mean, there's always a leader, and you follow who that leader is. And, and of course, uh, in the church, that's not any different, except for the, the difference is that all leaders in the church have a leader themselves. So it's not like who can do the wackiest thing, who can do the craziest thing, or the wildest thing. It's, you know, who can follow Christ. And that's really what Paul's talking about this morning. Just to give you some background on this, uh, these two letters uh, that Paul sends to the church at Corinth, you know, Paul helped start the church at Corinth. So, and he was an apostle, so he went from place to place, and he sort of, that was kind of his ministry. He, he would strengthen some churches, but he also started churches in different places. And then he would stay for a season, and then he would leave, and he would go somewhere else, Right? Um, and, and, so, and then after he left, there would be other people who would come, and sometimes they'd stay for a, a few weeks or a few months or maybe a year, and then they would go on and somebody else would come. Paul would always stay connected to his churches. He would write them letters, like this letter, these letters, where he would encourage them and teach them if he heard things. Like he would send representatives to hear how things were going, and then he would address them through letters and other things. So, so Paul was an, uh, an apostle, and like other apostles, he would go and start something, he'd move on to the next thing. And then other people would come. Now, in the church in Corinth, uh, there was a leader named Apollos who came through, who, was a, who was, had that same sort of a, a apostolic um, spirit. And, you know, we're told in the book of Acts that, that uh, Apollos basically 
uh, was, you know, was a, a man of God. He, he, you know, he loved Jesus. Uh, he was a passionate person. He was a learned person in the scriptures. Um, and, so, and, and as he was discipled, he became more and more faithful. But one of the things he did was he went to the church at Corinth, and apparently he went there and he preached there. And he was probably a better speaker even than Paul was. And so what you have here in this first chapter of this, uh, of this letter, this first piece of this letter from Paul to the church at Corinth, is, is this acknowledgement that Paul has gotten wind of the fact that there are now factions in the church at Corinth. So, you know, and that's what he says there, starting in, you know, in verse, uh, in verse 11 and 12. Um, you know, in verse 12 he says, What I mean is this, one of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas, who is Peter, the disciple Peter, who was kind of the, the head of the early Jesus movement. And still another says, I follow Christ. I would suggest to you that the fourth answer is the correct answer out of the multiple choice that you have there. And some of the folks got it right. They were saying, we follow Christ. You guys can follow Apollos and Paul and Cephas. We're going to follow Christ. And so Paul writes this letter to address some of the divisions that are happening in the church at Corinth. And he says to him, you know, look, I hear that I hear that there's these divisions, but I want to make some things clear to you. And so then he says, he starts in verse uh, 13, he says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I mean, he, he goes on, he, he's basically making uh, one fundamental point here, which is that the head of the church is Christ. The head of the church is Christ. And that's really important for us to be reminded that, that at the end of the day, all of us, um, whether it's pastors or, or lay people in the church who are leaders in the church, all of us derive our authority from Christ. The last six plus years, if you followed me, you should have only been following me as I followed Christ. And I've had great conversations with people who've said, you know, Matt, um, I, I hear your opinion on that, but I'm not sure that that's maybe what, maybe we should be doing this because I think that's what the scriptures teach or, or you know, I, I sense maybe God's doing a different thing. We've had great conversations in those ways. You should follow a leader as they follow Christ. That's what Paul's making sure he, everyone understands is here. Paul says, look, look, friends, I'm not the head of the church. Cephas is not the head of the church. Apollos is not the head of the church. Christ is the head of the church. And so if there's, if there's one thing that I, I want to lift up to you and remind you of this morning is that that's the thing we ought to be clear about here. If there's one leader in this church, the head of the church, head of any church, is Christ. And you follow the designated leader who follows Christ. And that's, and that's just an, an important, just, just a reminder. See, I've, I've been a part of two new church starts prior to this one. Never as, this, as the founding pastor. The first two I was a part of, one of them I was a part of uh, as, a, as a senior high youth. So some of you guys are in high school. I was in high school sitting right where you're sitting. And I was a part of a church just like this that was meeting in a school and then eventually built its first building. And then eventually the founding pastor moved and the second pastor came in. I then was a part of another new church start where I was a summer youth director um, and then became an associate pastor uh, of that church where the church started in a school, moved into a building, founding pastor moved on, second pastor came in. And in both of those situations, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't necessarily like this, but, it was, um, but there, was this, there was this sense in those two churches that people wanted to belong to one pastor or the other, as if the pastor was the head of the church. There were people who wanted to say, well, I, you know, I, I'm, 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 I belong to this faction that loves the founding pastor. And there's, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm new here, so I belong to the faction that, you know. That, and, and I've seen that play itself out in two different places. And nobody would ever say it that way. Here's what I think was really going on there. Here, this is what I really think. I think that people in those places, they felt like if they opened their heart up enough to let the new pastor and his family or her family come in and occupy that space, that somehow they were being disloyal to their friendship with the founding pastor. Now, they would never verbalize it that way. They would never say it that way. But there was always this undercurrent of, well, we just like the way he did it better. Or we just, uh, just isn't the same. We would use all these different language, this different language because no one ever really wants to put their agenda on the table anyway. We're good at hiding that stuff. 
and because, uh, you know, that's just, you know, that's just kind of human nature. But, but there was this sense of if, if, I, if I make room for the new person, I'm somehow being disloyal to the, to the previous person. And, and, and the same thing is what uh, Paul really addresses that again here. What Paul says here in verse 10, at the very beginning of all of his comments, is the same heart that I have for this church. He says this, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. See, Paul was clear that by people um, following uh, the leadership of Apollos, it was not, that was not in competition with him. You could love Paul and love Apollos both, and you could follow both of them as they followed Christ, and he wanted for the church to be united. And same thing, you can follow Cephas if you want to. As Cephas follows Christ, follow him. The leader that, that follows Christ, follow them. And there's room in your heart for all of them. At the end of the day, what Paul really wanted was for the church to be united, to be of one heart, of one thought, of one mind. He even says, be careful what you say. The words that you say, they kind of bring that power out. He, you know, he just, he says, this is my heart. And so I wanted you guys to hear from my lips this morning. Um, Something really brief that's important that needs to be said. Um, I want you to know from me that, first of all, I love these two people right here. And you can love me and you can love them. I, I, I want you to love them. They're going to do a great work here. You're going you're gonna to love their family. You're going to bless them in so many ways. And they're going to bless you as well. I want you to hear that from my lips, that you, there's room for all leaders here who follow Christ. And I know that Lance is a pastor who follows Christ. So I wanted you to hear that from me. I also want you to hear from me that um, we've been down a journey together that you, you can't erase that journey. Nobody would ever try to take that journey away from us. It's been a, a crazy, beautiful, scary, wonderful journey. Whether you've been here for a few months or a few weeks or this is your first Sunday or whether you've been here for six years, Lanson is not coming to try to replace me. He's coming to be himself, to lead as he follows Christ. He wants to lead in the way that Christ tells him to lead. And so that journey that we've been down, um, it, it's, it's always going to be the journey that we've been down. What I want you to know is that, uh, as, as you know, this is always tricky business because uh, John the Baptist said this of Jesus, and I'm not John the Baptist, and I'm, I'm pretty sure Lance isn't Jesus. Um, so... <laughs> So neither one of us are, are perfect for this analogy, but, but what John the Baptist said of Jesus was, he must increase and I must decrease. And what I want you guys to know is that on Thursday of this week, I, I moved my stuff out of the office of the pastor. Because Lance is the pastor here. Now I'm here for two more weeks. I'm always going to be your friend. I'm always going to love you. And we'll be co-leading for the next couple of weeks. But the office of pastor at the Watershed United Methodist Church is now occupied by Lance Richards. And you can love me and love him. And in fact, if you love me, you will love him. What I want people to know is that the way to show loyalty to a pastor, loyalty to pastors, by the way, is a little misplaced. Loyalty should go with Christ. Friendship goes to pastors Loyalty goes to Christ. If you want to show love and, and, and friendship to me, then you have to follow this leader. Because what I want to know, what I want to hear, I don't want to get the, the, the stuff that, that Paul gets. I want to get the stuff a year from now. And this is going to happen. I believe this is going to happen. Is that a year from now, the next time I see, you know, I'll see Lance at annual conference back you know, later in, in, in May, June time frame. I'm going to say, how are things going? He's going to say, man, they're going great. 
And then I want to be able to get those letters and phone calls. I want to see your e-news, and I want to hear that you've gone from two services to three services, that you've added 50 parking spots and you've already filled them, that you've gone from three services to five services, that, you've, that you're reaching more and more people, that you're being faithful in the way that you're sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, that you're impacting more people, that you're reaching out more faithfully every year, every a uh, month that goes by and every year that goes by to those who are least and last and lost in the world's eyes and reminding them that God has not forgotten them. I want to hear that stuff. Because when I hear that stuff, I'm going to know that I did my job. If you want to bless me, be the church that God's called you to be. Be the church that follows Christ as its head. If you want to bless me, if you want to love me, follow this leader. That's just something that needs to be said. You guys pray with me? God, we do thank you that you are the God of the universe and that you are the head of the the church. God, that you are the God who imagined the church, that you breathed life into the church. It is your chosen vessel to change the world. Maybe not how we're all currently constituted right now. God, we know that the church is messed up. All churches are messed up in some way. God, we know that the church was your idea. And it's our heart's desire to be more and more faithful to, the, to what it was that you birthed in your brain so many eons ago. God, I pray that you would bless this congregation. That you would bless the leadership, uh, the lay leadership that are here. And that you would grow up more and more leaders who will follow Christ here that you'll increase its impact both internally and in the community around us. God, pray that you would bless Lance and his leadership here. Pray, God, that you would raise up people in this church to love and bless his family, to befriend them and love them and raise them uh, into this family. God, you're an amazing God, and and we all trust you with this body of believers. God, I pray as well that that, uh, you would always help us to be reminded of the fact that you are the head of your church. All the rest of us are trying to be a part of something that you've already done and are doing. We want to follow you. Jesus' name. Amen.